Can you imagine what a pet-friendly hotel with that view would cost? This is why I love RVing. We're Lloyd and Mandy, a Canadian Aussie couple that spent the last 18 months traveling as digital nomads through Southeast Asia and Mexico. Now we're in North America having a crack at full-time RV life. Alright, we're just packing up to head off. We've been staying on this cool little campsite on the lake in Flathead Lake here in Montana for a couple nights. We've been trying to do more boondocking or off-grid camping because we prefer it. It's much more peaceful. It's a lot more privacy. I don't know if you can see behind me there, but we showed up here two days ago and we were the only ones here. And then on the second day, five other RVs showed up and parked right next to us. And it sort of took away our reason for being here because it was really peaceful, really quiet, really nice to swim in the lake and have some downtime but once people get really close to you it gets a little bit much it's not that they're not nice people or anything or we don't want to be you know talking to people or anything but when you step outside your rv and you're making eye contact with someone who's outside their rv it's not really what we got into this for we're going to try and find somewhere that's more isolated just us and we can have some peace and quiet to get out of there hey yeah I don't like necessarily mind being near people but um when we're boondocking that's not really the goal defeats the purpose of what we're trying to do yeah with boondocking we're not really quite set up for it yet because we don't have Wi-Fi we've got our phones but we can't really hotspot them for work um, so we need to sort that out. We don't have a reliable power source, like this thing we can go for like two or three days, but after that we need to drive around or something. And we can't charge a lot of stuff without draining the battery. So the other problem is to get all this stuff, we don't have an address, a physical address to send everything to. So we just spent two days at an RV park, um, which was pretty expensive. It was like $60 a night. We paid that because we thought it had a swimming pool and a hot tub and a sauna, and we thought it'd be a nice relaxing time. None of that was open. We were able to order a new generator, which we got delivered there. So we've got that, and now we're gonna go find somewhere to boondock on our own without anyone else around, and we should be able to stay for a few days. Can I come stay? Montana is stunning. Lloyd and I have fallen in love with it here so much. Like the climate is just incredible. Not too busy at the moment, but now that it's coming into summer, more people are coming out with their RVs. So it hasn't been as private as when we first got here, but like honestly can't complain. I Hopefully we find somewhere that's not so busy um, for this weekend. This is the one. It looks pretty quiet. So this is big arm, big arm unit of Flathead Lake. Uh, it's a state park. We've had pretty good luck with state parks. We just got to find somewhere where <laughs> where not oh. too many other people hopefully show up. It's a Tuesday, so like it shouldn't be that busy. Right on the lake. It's beautiful. This is a site here. That's pretty cool. Let's see if there's a more hidden one. Toilets. Do you want to be near the toilet? Um, not really. It looks like mostly tent sites here. Yeah, I think just down this way maybe. There's yurts up there. Cool. We have to get one of them up there. Work I would live in a yurt. I'm not living in one. I would. 
Why not? Probably in an RV. We had the right side to begin with. Of course they've got it on the right side. <laughs> they know what they're doing. We don't. Now we're going to have to back all the way out there and turn around <laughs> Yeah, again. that was pointless. <laughs> we had the correct way for us to pull in perfectly without turning around or anything and we thought the awning was on the other side. God, we're so embarrassing. <laughs> Bad. Ready, bear? Yay! Can you go swim? This is the best spot we've ever found. Yeah. So we have people there, but they're it looks 30 like they feet might away. just be hikers. I don't think they're actually camping there. It's just a car. Even if people do show up, it's pretty well separated. Yeah. Let's get this awning out. Okay. After looking around for a few weeks, we discovered this VTO man mainly because we were looking for a small size generator that we could charge through solar and that had all the features that we needed. This thing actually comes in at roughly half the price as competitors such as Jackery, which is a really famous um, brand that makes generators like this. And one of the key things that stood out for me was that they do free shipping to the US and Canada. And it even said on their website that it would arrive within three days. I was calling bullshit, but it did, it showed up. It took us about two or three hours to get a full charge off the 200 watt solar panels. It did come with 80% charge already, but we only had it in the sun for a couple of hours and it got a full charge. One of the best features about it is we can charge this off our 12 volt input in the front of our van and charge it while we're driving. So we don't even need to worry about using the solar. That's really only if we're gonna be somewhere for longer than a few days. So with a full charge, you can charge your phone 140 times, a drone 35 times, a laptop 24 times. You can run a fan 40 times. You can run a fridge for 31 hours. You can charge a camera 87 times. This is all just off one charge. According to their website, it has over 3,100 life cycles until it gets to 80% capacity. So we could be using this thing for a couple of years easily. All right, we're gonna go for a walk and check out this local campsite, but we're gonna put this generator to the test. We're gonna try and charge all of our stuff at once and see how much juice it uses. It's fully charged now. Well, it's not fully charged, it's about 95%. 
but that's high enough. And we're gonna plug everything in and come back and see how much it's used. If everything's charged up and good to go, we'll know if this generator's really got as much juice as it says. It feels so good to have free energy. <laughs> <laughs> If it charges everything up and then doesn't use too much power, we can charge this generator in like six or seven hours in the sun. It's awesome. Oh, it's something so satisfying about not having to pay for it. <laughs> so we're going to put both of our phones on there, both computers, our other camera, because we'll be using this one. Um, I've got a beard trimmer and our drone. That's pretty much everything we use, right? Yeah. I'm curious to see how much, like how quickly it'll go down when we do it. Yeah. Because it shows the amounts of like percentage that it's at on the screen. I want to see how like if it goes like, ooh, like, yeah. So yeah. <laughs> let's check it out. Okay. It's got this little quick charge thing here, which I guess charges up USBs quicker than just your regular USB. So I'll put my phone on that. Where's your phone? Mm, I never know. You, you yeah. never know where your phone is, eh? <laughs> no. Oh, some guy's walking past. You've seen all of our stuff on the table here. <laughs> if we're going to get broken into while we're going. Alright. It's a bit of stuff. <laughs> it is. Alright. It hasn't budged yet. Is it all charging? Yeah. Yep. Let's see what happens when we get back, eh? Mm-hmm. Ready to go, babe? Ready to go? There you go. So we've been staying at state parks and we've stayed at a couple of RV parks so far. So far we haven't had much luck with the RV parks because it kind of feels like doing the really touristy thing when you go like overseas, like when you go to Mexico, it's kind of like staying at the touristy all-inclusive and not getting the full experience of like what's actually out there, if that makes sense, like actually being out in nature. That's just our opinion. Not everyone will agree with that, but that's just how we felt. And there's really no privacy. <laughs> at RV parks, like we just felt like little sardines sort of. Even when there wasn't many people there, we find that we always get put right next to the other people that are staying at the park. I'm not sure why the RV parks tend to do that. <laughs> Maybe it's easier for them if everyone's in the same spot. Yeah, I guess so, but. The thing with the RV parks is it's just not really camping. It's no. good for cheap accommodation. And if you had like a really nice luxury RV where, you know, they got like the windows, one way windows where no one can see inside, then it'd be good. But if you don't have that, it kind of sucks. Mm -hmm. I think it's more of an option if you just want to go and see a new place and you got somewhere to stay. Yeah, and, and you still yeah have the amenities and you're not yeah roughing it as much, but... If you're looking for camping, that's not it. It's not it. Definitely not. <laughs> this is less than half the price of the RV park that we stayed at. And it's way better. This state park is just down the street from the RV park that we were just staying at. And... I would choose this 100% of the time. <laughs> this is actually right on the lake and the RV park made it sound like it was on the lake but when we got there it actually was inland and there was no water access to the lake. So that was a bit misleading as well. And as we mentioned the pool was closed which I'm <laughs> not going to stop talking about. Yeah. <laughs> so you can probably tell by looking at our van it's not a finished product. We're sort of working with what we have and figuring out what we need to finish it and get it fully set up, especially for boondocking. But it's really hard because we don't have a physical address. So right now, all we can do is like figure out where we're gonna be in a week or two's time and order something online. Having a generator is gonna make it a lot easier because now we can have a Wi-Fi set up and we can keep working. But I think what we're learning is that everything's just a step, like we're taking it step by step and getting this thing more and more comfortable and suitable for doing this kind of camping and hopefully, I don't know, in a few months, it'll be a finished product.
I reckon with this new generator, we could probably boondock for a week or more. That's awesome. Because our propane lasts us like over a month. Um, our water's the big thing. We just have to be sparing with our water, but we could do that. Yeah. Especially with a lake when you're going swimming every day. You don't need to shower every day. No, no, and lots of dry shampoo. <laughs> that might be a good challenge to see how long we could go off grid. We're not gonna do Let's it yet. Let's do it. But, <laughs> but we're not gonna do it yet because we've been told we need to get down to Yellowstone before it gets too busy with school holidays and the summer camping period starting. It's like mid-May at the moment and apparently end of May is Memorial Day and after that it just gets flooded with tourists so we're on a bit of a mission now to get down to Yellowstone in the next like week before it gets too crazy. Alright, it's been about an hour and a half of charging. Yeah, your phone's fully charged. So is mine. So that started on 94% and it's on 88. So it's used 6% of the battery. So we'd get like 20 charges on this thing. Awesome. What a beast. Oh my God. So loud. Like did yesterday. <laughs> Waterfront living didn't last very long. Last night was insane. Hail fell from the sky about this big. Bear was freaking out all night because of the thunder and lightning and we could see lightning cracking on the hills there and now it's just covered in smoke I guess. It probably started a little bushfire. I don't think it's very big. So our plans for boondocking here for a few days probably changed. We're gonna head south now to Yellowstone. Let's get to Yellowstone Park. I can't wait. Me too. Mm -hmm. 